there are days that define your story beyond your life. Like the day they arrived. Because you only have one chance to make a first impression. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 first contact movies. For this list, we'll be looking at the films that best represent the concept of first contact with alien, that is, otherworldly peoples and races. Hey, I've got this. The events that follow don't have to go completely smoothly, but we will be drawing the line at all out invasions and conflicts. Number 10, Flight of the Navigator. Uh oh. David Freeman is just barely in his double digits when he's plucked up by an alien spaceship. Picked up in 1978, David is offloaded in 1986 and finds, from his perspective anyway, that his eight year old brother has become 16 in the span of about four and a half hours. This is totally rad. I mean, you're my big little brother. Crazier still, somewhere along the way during his 1,120 light year round trip to Phalon, young David's brain has become jam packed full of data and star maps. So you need me and my inferior brain to fly that thing? Correction, I need the superior information in your inferior brain to fly this thing. Max, the ship's robotic pilot, realizes he needs David's maps and that he's plunked the lad in the wrong decade, but is unable to undo his mistake. But as adventure unfolds, Max does find a way, and it's a journey loved by so many that a remake has been discussed. Number 9, Starman. Have people from your world been here before? Before, yes. We are interested in your species. Directed by John Carpenter and leading to a TV spin off and an Oscar nod for lead Jeff Bridges, Starman is a love story disguised as a sci fi. What's it like up there? It is beautiful. Not like this, but it is beautiful. When an alien race mistakes humanity's invitation to visit Earth as sincere, they take us up on it, only to have their scout shot down over Wisconsin. As his people live as pure energy, Starman needs to take a physical form to try and salvage his vacay in the Midwest, and he becomes the spitting image of a widow's recently deceased husband. We represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth. I send greetings. Through goodwill and proof of peaceful intentions, the widow agrees to help the alien meet up with his rescue party. Along the way, Starman takes part in the finest of earthly pleasures, driving a Ford Mustang, gambling in Vegas, and making sweet, sweet love. I love you. Number 8, The Abyss. Hell yes, we read. Good of you to join us. Coffee deep pork. Hey, I've got him! Directed and written by James Cameron, The Abyss is a first contact film unlike any other. Following a submarine accident, the US government sends in a team of scientists and Navy SEALs. Soon, the group discovers a society of aliens, dubbed NTIs or non-terrestrial intelligence, living under the sea. NTIs, oh man, that's better than UFOs. Oh, but that works too, huh? Underwater flying objects. Known as much for the horrid filming conditions, 40% of which was shot underwater at an abandoned nuclear power plant, as it is for its game-changing effects, The Abyss mixes the wonder of off-world life forms with the highs and lows of the human condition, and sets it all against Cold War tensions with the Soviet Union. Sonic, listen, he's about to declare war on an alien species just when they're trying to make contact with us, please! Number 7, The Man Who Fell to Earth. I can't say. You're an alien! Few will deny that the late David Bowie was a genius, and an equal few would likely deny that he was a little odd. All of this made him a perfect casting choice for Thomas Jerome Newton, a charming yet quirky alien who lands on Earth. On a mission to locate a source of water for his drought-plagued planet, Newton quickly learns to play the industrial game and files patents for his off-world tech, raking in millions in the process. I can't explain it to you completely. But if I stay here, I shall die. 
The thin white duke from another son plans to use the money to build a ride back home. But then the government has to railroad his plans as only the government can. Thanks to Bowie's performance and its striking imagery, this sci-fi drama has since earned itself a cult following. What do you do? For a living, I mean. Oh, just visiting. Number 6. District 9 I just want everyone watching this right now to learn from what has happened. At its best, sci-fi uses its futuristic and alien trappings to tackle subject matter that would otherwise be taboo, unsettling, or unpleasant. Something District 9 pulls off like few others. I want to be realistic with everyone. The aliens will not be able to go home. The aliens are here to stay. Ostensibly a story about the fallout of South African contact with an alien species, D9 is in many ways an allegory for the country's apartheid-era past and the real-life District 6. How are you doing that? Who's moving that ship? Made with $30 million set aside for an unmade Halo movie, D9 sees Vikas Vandamarva, a bumbling government agent, overseeing the relocation of Johannesburg's alien population. However, things are flipped turned upside down when Vikas is hit by an alien spray that begins altering his DNA. We just found a dangerous uh, object here. Uh, it has a fluid in that I suspect might leak onto people or cause damage. The result is a masterful, emotional, and captivating movie with the makings of a sci-fi classic. Thomas! Yes, sir! Thomas, keep the gun on him! Okay, I got him, sir! Keep the gun on him, Thomas! There's, there's weapons here! Number 5. Contact This morning, detection of an unidentified radio source from deep space can neither be confirmed nor denied. Based on a novel by Carl Sagan, Contact is the story of a really good day for the SETI. While the government works towards defunding and even ending the program, Dr. Eleanor Arroway picks up a series of prime numbers, a definite sign of intelligent alien life. Two, three, five, seven, those are all prime numbers. And there's no way that's a natural phenomenon. Holy okay, shit. Okay, let's just calm down. Arriving with the numbers and a repeat of Hitler's 1936 Olympic address is 60,000 pages of data, all of which researchers determine came from the Vega system 26 light years away if it works and you travel to vega at even close to the speed of light when you come back if you come back when arroway is elected to make contact with the alien people it raises questions of the merit of religion and faith in the face of scientific discovery and how far either side will go to defend its position the only thing we found that makes the emptiness bearable is each other What happens now? Now, you go home. Number four, the day the Earth stood still. <coughs> Although remade in 2008 with Keanu Reeves in the lead role, it's the 1950s original that stood the test of time. Directed by Robert Wise, The Day the Earth Stood Still is a sci-fi by which all others are judged. Good. That too. Nick Toe. Based on the 1940 short story Farewell to the Master, the film sees an alien craft land in Washington, D.C. Its occupants, an alien named Klaatu and his robot guard Gort, have brought an important message for all of Earth's leaders. Play nice or be destroyed. Your choice is simple. Join us and live in peace or pursue your present course and face obliteration. When Klaatu goes native as Mr. Carpenter, the Jesus allegories stack up. But the film's main thread of Earth's need to toe the line remains clear. You're a long way from home, aren't you, Mr. Carpenter? How did you know? Oh, I can tell a New England accent a mile away. Number 3. E.T. the Extraterrestrial You were outside last night waiting for that thing to come back, weren't you? Developed from Steven Spielberg's stalled sci-fi horror project Night Skies, the more kid-friendly E.T. would become one of the biggest and highest-grossing films of the decade. <gasps> Essentially the story of an alien botanist stranded on Earth. E.T. shows himself to be able to restore life, but he also seemingly has Jedi-like powers including telekinesis and a psychic bond with Elliot, the young boy who helps and looks after him. You could be happy here. I could take care of you. I wouldn't let anybody hurt you. We could grow up together, E.T. 
Its uplifting story of friendship and family, as well as its elements of sci-fi fantasy, have earned it critical acclaim, multiple awards, and a spot in millions of hearts. Number 2. 2001 A Space Odyssey 18 months ago, the first evidence of intelligent life off the Earth was discovered. It's hard for anyone to say exactly what this 1968 Stanley Kubrick classic is actually about, but let's try it anyway. Although it's easy to be distracted by the film's signature dish, the sentient computer HAL 9000, 2001 is, at its core, about first contact, in the form of the ominous black monoliths that repeatedly change the course of the film. Kubrick did, in fact, consider putting aliens on screen, but was advised against using humanoids by author and astronomer Carl Sagan, as well as by limitations of budget and special effects technology. The result instead is the mysterious and ambiguous monoliths that accelerate humankind's knowledge and natural evolution with each encounter. Except for a single, very powerful radio emission aimed at Jupiter, the four-million-year-old black monolith has remained completely inert. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. What is he doing? He's making a model. They say if we go with them, we'll live forever. That's good. My God. They're really from another world. Number one, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He says the sun came out last night. He says it sang to him. When lineman Roy Neary experiences a UFO flyby, it opens up a whole new world to him. Eventually uncovering government cooperation with extraterrestrials, Roy discovers not only a UFO landing zone, but also witnesses an organized offloading of people from decades past. What do you want? I just want to know that it's, it's really happening. Finding the aliens to be peaceful explorers rather than hostile invaders, Roy ultimately decides to join them. Monsieur Neri, I envy you. Aliens aside, the critically and commercially successful Close Encounters has been forever etched into pop culture. From its distinct five-note musical motif to the iconic image of an obsessed Roy sculpting Devil's Tower in mashed potatoes. I don't think we're going to need any security, really, because it's going to be very low-key, believe me. Do you agree with our list? I am leaving soon, and you will forgive me if I speak bluntly. What's your favorite First Contact movie? For more ambassadorial top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Live long and prosper.